In 2002, AFI did something that a lot of fans saw as a bit of a betrayal of their do-it-yourself punk roots. They left their record, Nitro Records, and joined Dream, uh, DreamWorks Records in 2002. And this, in a lot of ways, leaving a fairly independent label for a more mainstream and uh, popular label run by a big corporation, a lot of fans really weren't happy with that move. However, in 2003, they released Sing the Sorrow, which is widely recognized as their kind of breakthrough album. And it's it's probably their most controversial album because this is where a lot of fans kind of get to the point where they, like I said, a lot of fans saw it as a bit of a betrayal. It's a more mainstream album. It's a bit more accessible than anything that they've done in the past. It sounds a little bit different. But in the same route, it gained a lot of fans as well because of that. It was more accessible. It did kind of bring uh, that that punk, that hardcore, that horror punk music that they were doing and kind of brought it to the mainstream a little bit. And it, it's definitely polarizing. It's among their fans, you know, it's recognized as either their best work or the point where people kind of lost interest and again saw it just as a slap in the face in terms of what they were actually doing. And while a lot of people see it as a huge shift in the sound, I don't really see it that way. I don't think it was that much of a shift in their sound so much as a polishing of what they had been doing. A lot of the songs on here, in a lot of ways, it does sound like something, it sounds like Art of Drowning that's just been kind of shined up a little bit. The vocals are cleaner, there's more epic moments on there. It's a bit more theatrical, it's a bit more open in, in, in its sound in general. They still kind of keep a lot of that uh, lyrical content, that the dark gothic horror uh, stuff, and and then there, which is something I really kind of enjoyed. Um, there are more songs on here that sound like alternative rock, um, and in that way, it's not that great. Those songs are still good songs to listen to, it, but I do see that kind of point of it's completely different than anything done, they've done before and it's done in a way to be accessible. It's meant to gain more fans and to not only court the hardcore punk scene as they kind of had been doing for a while. And they had been kind of leading towards this. Even with Black Sails in the Sunset, there were still some songs on there that kind of pushed to the more mainstream and more alternative rock and they incorporated some of those elements to it but they never really went full blown until Sing the Sorrow. And those those songs, the radio, more radio friendly songs, uh, they kind of stumble a little bit for me at least. I, I mean, they're okay. Uh, I just, I feel like they fit, uh, fit they're out of place to me. Um, the, the songs like Paper Airplanes, Makeshift Wings, for instance, just feels like complete hard rock to me and it, it kind of doesn't fit when you have other songs on here uh, like The Great Disappointment and Bahamas Is Nowhere, which really sound like they would have been right off of Art of Drowning, just a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. And they, there's this kind of clashing of styles of their old and their new on here. So there is some things for people to like, but there's a lot for older fans to kind of reject on here. But overall, this album is a very, very good album. I, I think the people who don't really like it, I think aren't willing, giving it enough of a chance to kind of dismiss it and say that they're, they don't like it because it's different, because it's mainstream, because it's on a, a big label versus an independent label. And I don't think that's a really fair criticisms of this album, just because accessibility can be a good thing. It doesn't always have to be a, a bad thing. And I think that AFI on Sing of the Sorrow really did it well. They actually did manage to uh, bring in a lot of things that I don't I think we're kind of missing before that helped them break through and, and gain this mainstream success and this album was highly successful it sold a, a ton of copies uh, it's still recognized today it's still found on a lot of best of lists people recognize it I mean even people who don't really listen to uh, that music just they'll know that album or they'll know the AFI because of that album a lot of times and I, I think that despite all the missteps on this album, it really does still feel like an AFI album. It still feels like they did a fantastic job in doing this. And so what if it's a bit more accessible, a little bit more mainstream overall? That doesn't really hampen the quality of the actual album itself. Some of those songs, like I said, not so great. They're okay songs. I don't really think there's a 
necessarily bad song on this album, but I just feel like it, it, there's songs that could have been better or could have been left off the album and it would have been a little bit more stronger for that. But overall, the whole package of Sigma Sorrow is just absolutely fantastic. I still really enjoy this album and I kind of went through this period where I did hate on this album a lot because of that reason, because it was a mainstream album, because of, uh, but you know, like I said, that, that doesn't really matter. There's not really necessarily fair criticisms of this album just because, you know, they, they decided to uh, court a bigger audience or anything like that. It doesn't feel like it's necessarily intentionally dumbed down or anything like that. It doesn't feel like they lost their focus. It, it really kind of helped them gain more fans, which is great for the band, because hopefully they'll go back through their discography and listen to more stuff. And, uh, you know, that that's always great. Um, you know, but I do consider this kind of a new era of AFI. This it, it does separate them from their their indie rock uh, or indie punk roots. They're on a bigger label. They're going after a bigger audience. They're trying to polish their sound. They're trying to incorporate elements that are a, a bit more radio friendly and and accessible overall. And they're successful in doing that. But they've kind of left that style behind them. And this is kind of a sign of, hey, we're moving forward with our sound, you know, come join us, come listen to this album. And I, I think that's respectable, definitely what they have done. And this is, again, definitely a point where the band kind of shifts. It, it, it is a new era, it is a new time, a, a dawn of a new age of AFI. Thank you so much for watching the AFI Review Series Part 8. Next time we're going to be taking a look at December Underground.